Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Steven here and welcome back to another tablet review. Well today we're going to have a look at the Cube U25 GT tablet and it's a very very cheap tablet, so 50 to 60 bucks. Kinda cheap, I've got a lot of requests on that tablet. I'm really not sure why, because this is really one of the cheapest tablets ever. But well, I've decided now to get one for you to review it. I'm not a real tablet user, so the last tablet review I did was on the Techlast Windows tablet, I think, or on the iRulu tablet, so also some kind of cheap um, sub-$100 tablet, 10.1 um, inches or something like that. But here we have a smaller one. It's a 7-inch tablet, and it's really very cheap, so 50 bucks. So a lot of people are on a limited budget, just like I was when I was younger. And I know that old people want to have a tablet, a phone and whatever. So many people are looking out to cheap Chinese tablets. And here we've got one. So that's the Cube U25 GT from TomTop. The link is down below in the description. Special thanks to TomTop for sending this out. So well, um, as the price already tells you, it doesn't come with many accessories. The performance is a little bit low. But we can just have a quick look at the specs. So um, it comes with Android 4.1.1. Then it's running the ROC chip RK2928. It's a single core, so not even dual core, and it's running at only 1.0 GHz. You see that the system UI is also kind of laggy. And yeah, you will see that um, in the review then. But um, those ROC chip chipsets, they are very cheap. So in production, those tablets are something like 30 bucks. But well, um, the retail shops then sell it for something like 50 to 60, which is actually a good price. Then it only comes with 512 megabytes of DDR3 RAM. I mean, it's enough because it's only running a single core, so more RAM wouldn't make so much sense. 8 gigabytes of internal storage, then a TN display. Um, basically, the difference to IPS displays is um, the viewing angle or viewing angles because um, it changes really the color, so it depends from which angle you look at the tablets at the display, because sometimes it's really hard to read it, but if you look straight at the tablet, just like the camera now does, there is no problem at all. But I will show you that later. Now the native screen resolution is um, 1024 x 600, it comes with Wi-Fi integrated, no GPS, 0.3 megapixel front facing camera somewhere here, then a 2500 mAh battery, we're going to open it up to check out the battery too. And well, just the front facing camera, is there a rear camera? No, there isn't. So it also comes with some accessories, but not really many. So actually all you get, whoops, holy crap. <laughs> so what you actually get is a um, charging cable. No, actually that's a charger with the charging cable. And that's a cable to connect it to a computer. It can also be charged over USB, but this takes way longer. Okay guys, so that's just regarding what you get, um, what you should expect from this tablet, so not too much because it's very cheap, but let's just get started, let's do the review. Don't forget to check out the link to TomTop down below in the description. And now guys, let's get directly started and let's check this out. Alright guys, now here's the charger, and well, the output says here 5 volts, 2 amps, and um, it outputs almost 1.8 amps, so charging with that rate, which is kinda good. And the charger looks better than some other chargers I've had with um, those cheap tablets, so the charger is really not too bad, but honestly it's also not the best quality, and I have to use an adapter, so they um, included an adapter for my country. And what I hate about these adapters here, that they sometimes get stuck in the wall socket, so you just pull that out and this is stuck in the socket. But here on this one, it fits really hard, and um, that's actually kind of good. But the charger, not the best quality, but hey, it's working, it doesn't get hot like some other chargers, so it's okay. Here um, on the data sheet, once again, input range 100 to 240 volts. You don't have to worry that you just burn it, and the output is around 10 watts, a little bit less. Okay, so what do we have here? Here we have the DCN check, as you can see. Um, it's a little bit too long, so what you will see then, um, if you plug it in, that um, it doesn't fit 100% in. So be careful, don't force it in, otherwise you will maybe break some contacts. This is a common problem on some cheap tablets, but if you are careful, no problem at all. Alright, then here we have the USB cable, as you can see. 
So micro USB cable to connect it to the computer, transfer data onto the tablet. It's also charging actually over micro USB but with a very slow rate. So I would suggest using the DC adapter and yeah, that's basically everything you can find inside of the package. No cover, no screen protector. So well, for the price it's okay. I mean, it's just 50 bucks. So what do you expect from that? Okay guys, now that are the charging accessories and now let's have a look at the tablet from the outside and let's check everything out. So guys, here you can see what I meant with, um, it doesn't fit to 100%, so um, you see it's, it's not going all the way in. And it's not a problem because it's charging fine, but I've seen some people um, breaking their um, DC in check because they wanted to force it all the way in. So please don't do that. You will just um, bend the contacts in there and then just break it. So be a bit careful with that, but as, as long as you just pull it, um, put it in like this, you see, oh, get out of here. If you just put it in like this, then this is absolutely no problem at all. But don't force it all the way in because um, you could break the DC in check, but you have that on really all cheap tablets. Okay guys, then now let's just go and let's check out the tablet and all the connectors. So guys, there we go. Here's the Cube U25 GT tablet. And it's a seven inch tablet, so kind of handy. The display comes with a resolution of 1024 times 600, if I'm right. This is not HD, but it's looking okay. Only downside so far is that it's a TN panel. Um, the difference between TN panels and IPS panels is basically that the viewing angles they are not that good on TN panels so you have to look pretty straight at the display otherwise the colors are looking strange and also the colors they are not looking that fresh like on IPS panels. But well um, for the price of about 50 you usually don't get IPS panels in, in tablets because um, those panels are getting more expensive the bigger they are. Tablets usually have huge displays and for the cheap price you cannot you can cannot um, yeah, get an IPS panel on a tablet, it's way too expensive. But there are also some um, tablets which have IPS panels and they're around 100 or at least more. So you really have to check that out. Okay, so that's basically the front side. Black frame, as you can see, a little bit thicker here on the smaller side. And there are no capacitive buttons or hardware buttons. So um, there's one hardware button, which is the power button, but that's basically it. So all the other buttons, they are software buttons, as you can see, so in here. And if you rotate the tablet, yeah, also the buttons rotate, then you will have the buttons here. You know how that works on Android. And here we have the front facing camera, left top corner, very small, 0 0.3 megapixels. I will later show you some selfies, not the best quality, but hey, at least it's working. Okay, so that's basically the front side, then let's flip it over, and here's the back side, guys. So what do we have here? Um, I think I know that design, so it's some kind of public design, I think. Um, probably Q bought it, they did put their own logo on there. And here you can see the model number, the DC in 5 volts, 2 amps, rated at 10 watts, made in China. And I cannot see CE actually here. I think that looks a little bit like CE, but looks kind of different. Um, the customs in my country, well, they don't care about this, but just make sure that um, your, your customs don't care about CE, so maybe ask them or whatever. Otherwise, you could have a problem with importing it. But I don't think so that you would have problems. Okay, right top corner um, here at the back side, you can see the speaker. Speaker quality, well, not the best, but it's working. We'll later also take it apart so I can show you how it looks from the inside. So what is that hole here, which you can see right over here? Now that's the reset switch and the button. And basically there's a, there's a hole. If the tablet hangs up, you cannot remove the battery. So you have here a reset button, just go in there with a needle or something like that. So something which is small and fits in here and then you can press the reset button to reset the tablet. Quite common and I wouldn't buy a tablet which doesn't come with a reset switch because I've seen some and then you would have to open it up. These are the battery, it's just a pain in the ass and you don't want that. Okay then let me show you all the ports and connectors but let me quickly adjust the camera. So guys here you can see all the ports and connectors. Let's get directly started. First of all here at the bottom we have two screws. Basically if you unscrew that you can just lift off the back cover as we'll do a little bit later. Here SD card slot the Intel memory is only 8 gigs, so you can extend it up to 40 by using um, SD cards up to 32 gigs, which is a good thing. Then here, um, the HDMI output port, and I think the maximum output is 720p, and full HD would be too hard to handle for it, probably. And here we have the DC in check, so you can charge the tablet with up to 10 watts. Also here, USB port to connect it to the computer, OTG supported. But, well, um, what I want to say about this is when you charge it over USB, 
USB. You can definitely do it, but um, just keep in mind if you charge it um, over an USB port of your computer or whatever, the maximum current is only 0.5 amps, so it will charge with only around 2 watts, which is um, not really much. Here, the 3.5 millimeter jack to connect headset, headphones, whatever. Usually on cheap tablets, 50 50 game, if it's um, really good or not, sometimes it's badly grounded or soldered, and then you have some noise in there. But here on this one, actually, it sounds okay. Here, the hardware um, power switch, which is a good thing. I like that you have it um, here at the top with all the connectors, and here the reset hole. So basically, that's all you need to reset it or um, just to turn it on or off here with the power button and to lock it. Okay, um, here are the screws. So what I will do now is I will just open it up. Just lift off the back cover and then I can show you how it looks from the inside. So let's go. So guys, there we go. This is how the tablet looks from the inside. So I've removed the back cover. Here the battery, 2500 milliamps. It's here soldered to the mainboard as you can see. Here the speaker looks kind of crappy. Sound coming out of it also sounds a little bit strange, but it's okay. Um, funny thing is that the um, anti-static um, whatever that thing is. Actually, it should have RF shields, but um, here they are just using some kind of tape and anti-static cover. It looks really funny, but the build quality is okay. At least no fake battery here inside, so definitely 2500 milliamps. So we don't have 3G on the tablet, no SIM card slot as you can see. So this is definitely okay. Here, for instance, the micro SD card slot. All in all, it looks kind of okay, and that's basically how a $50 tablet looks from the inside. But um, let's just go and let's put back together, and then I will show you how it performs in Android. So let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, I've now switched off the lights, and let me show you what a TN panel actually looks like. So if you just flip this play, you see, um, it's really hard to see or read what's on the display, but if you look straight at it, it's looking okay. Colors and everything, it's looking okay, but if you start to flip it, then the colors are changing. So you can see now it's dark, now it gets really bright. Um, it really depends on the TN panel, so which viewing angles you have, but usually um, it just doesn't look that good like on an IPS display. If it would be an IPS display, then you would easily um, be able to read what's on the display or at least just see the colors like they should look like here. But um, if you can deal with that then it's absolutely no problem and most of those cheap tablets they just come with TN panels. Okay, let's jump into Android and let's check out how the baby here performs. So guys, we're now here in Android 4.1.1 on the tablet and well, if you can see some kind of rainbow effect here, that's not the display of the tablet. So that's actually my camera it has some issues with the focus, so to focus properly and then you can see some kind of rainbow effect. But well, that's not the display. Okay, so this is how it looks. Um, default background, I have just changed the launcher. I'm now using Nova Launcher because the stock launcher was so laggy it was unusable. Now well, this um, tablet comes with a single core CPU. There are a lot of other tablets with 7 inch. Um, they also come with a octa core, quad core. I would definitely go for that. This one here comes with a better display than some others because some of them don't even have um, 640 times 800 or whatever. So they have some very low resolution um, displays. This one here is a bit better, but honestly the performance of it is really slow sometimes. So it didn't hang up so far, but um, all the animations, you would have to switch everything off and really also deep load it a little bit. So with that, I mean just free up memory in the background because you only have 60 megabytes of free RAM in the background. So well, um, this is how it performs. As I've said, I had to change the launcher to Nova Launcher. It's now better, but before that it was really laggy. Okay guys, so let's have a look at the menu. So here you can see the menu. You have on-screen buttons. What I don't like is that you don't have hardware volume rockers, so you have to use the, hard, um, the software buttons here to adjust the volume, access the menu, and I just don't like that. Okay, let's go to the settings and let's check everything out here. We can go all the way down here to about the tablet. And here we have system updates and rock chip, rock chip system updates. We can go here to check now, but most of the time it will say system up to date because, well, who develops a tablet which is a year old? Nobody. Trust me, guys, you won't see a system update on those devices. Okay, Android 4.1.1, so let's confirm that. And there we go. Come on, show me the Android version. And here it is, the Jelly Bean. And there we go, where's the Easter egg? 
Oh man, that's you see even that he is lagging and he will have all the jelly beans. Well, nice. Let's go back here. Okay, so let's have a quick look at Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi signal is really okay. I also had a signal in my sleeping room. It's in the second floor and the router is actually um, in the basement, so currently in the room next to me. We have signal strength good, link speed 72 Mbit, so this is definitely okay. But this tablet doesn't come with Bluetooth, so there is really only Wi-Fi. So the only thing you can do with that tablet is use it as a surfing station. <laughs> that's it, guys. So, well, that's it um, on the wireless networks. There's really nothing special. Just Wi-Fi and the usual stuff like portable hotspot, Ethernet and mobile network settings. We can have a look here at the display settings. Um, there's also nothing special. I did just set the display to 30 minutes because for filming, but that's it. And here we have the HDMI output. Now you can set the resolution to full HD, but trust me guys, if you hook this up, I tried it to full HD, it's lagging so much, you don't want to see that in 720p, 50 hertz, it's actually okay. Not so laggy, but in full HD, this is really laggy. Okay, um, we have your screenshot settings, not going to cover that, but let's have a look at the storage. Now it comes with two partitions, um, doesn't make sense for me if you just have 8GB of internal storage, but at least you can extend the internal storage with micro SD cards. You see we have one partition, total space partition, and one NAND flash partition. Then um, luckily I could install also apps here on the second one, but really I don't get why they do um, two partitions on that low internal memory. Oh well, you have now seen a picture that um, was shot with the front facing camera you see here. I will later show you that too. Um, here we have battery stats. <laughs> well, it looks like some mountains here. But let me explain that a little bit. I've got the tablet um, here. Then I haven't used it, so I just checked it out, left it on in standby. It was draining almost no power until here. I've just used it casually, so I've used it to check my emails, blah, blah, blah. And if you use it like this, so the, um, the tablet is most of the time in standby, then really nice. So you can get two days or whatever. But you see the screen on time, so there wasn't really much screen on time. Here we had a lot of screen on time and boom, the battery was falling down. So you have a couple of hours on screen time if you're using it all the time. But if you're using it um, on occasion, so you just want to check your emails or whatever, no problem at all to use it for more than a day. But 2500 is also not too much, that's just like a bigger phone battery. I mean the chipset is a single core and doesn't drain a lot of performance, but honestly, well, battery could be bigger, so in a tablet I expect at least 3000 or more. Oh well, then let's have a look at apps running in the background. So what do we have here? And let's see um, how much free RAM we can get on the tablet. Oh well, um, 77, that's more than before, so when I checked it out it was something like 60. You see, um, we have 317 megabytes used from the 512, but well, you cannot use all the 512, so you end up with 80, 60, 70 megabytes of free RAM. And this already tells you 3D games, forget it. 2D games, okay, I just played some, what did I play, Candy Crush, or I've just deinstalled that, it's such a piece of shit. But it wasn't too bad to play 2D games, but 3D, 3D games, you will see it a little bit later, um, it was too laggy, I couldn't play some racing games, it was just unplayable, but we'll check it out a little bit later. At least the tablet comes very clean, no chunk work. Oh, what the hell is that? Tau ba I didn't see that in the menu, but oh, they ha I see what they did here. They disabled those apps. That's pretty good because we have a lot of chunk here. We have here some Chinese games and it's, I wouldn't say it's spyware, but those games, sometimes they just reinstall other games or install other games and it's quite annoying. So it's pretty good that they are disabled in the ROM, but at least they, the APKs, they are still in the ROM. That's not good. So the ROM is not 100% clean. If you know what you're doing, you could just throw out all those APKs from the system folder. But um, you see, there's still some chunk on there, but um, at least it's disabled, which is a good thing. Okay, then let's have a look at location services. That's basically GPS, but over Wi-Fi, so we're not going to cover that. And here we have language and input. So here um, we have um, languages and the translation. People always ask me about that. Um, 
I checked it out in German, so I also speak German actually, it's my mother tongue, but um, the translation is often kind of bad. So if you have a phone, then the phone is tablet or some other words are misspelled. So if you are really bad at English and you want to have a good translation, then you probably end up with a 50-50 translation. Some words will remain in English or they will just sound strange. But honestly, that's, um, that's the native Android translation, which is not too good. Okay, um, backup and reset, so the usual stuff, and here we have developer options for USB debugging if you want to do something over ADB um, on the computer, for instance. Okay, that's everything in the settings. Now the launcher with Nova Launcher, it's okay with, with the stock launcher, it was just horrible, it was really laggy. So this felt like an MTK 6752 oh, smartphone, so the dual cores. Okay, then let's have a look here at the Android status bar. So here notifications for emails or whatever. So if you want to check your emails, if you want to write Facebook messages, this is no problem at all. But if you want to do some serious stuff with it, so yeah, just run bigger apps uh, or gaming or whatever, then this tablet is way too slow. Let's have a look here at the quick toggles. So here we have Wi-Fi. We have auto-rotate screen currently working. The display is currently on maximum brightness, could be a little bit brighter, but um, it's okay. Um, here we have audio notification settings, so yeah, the usual stuff, so nothing too fancy. And here also the menu button, so basically all the buttons, and if you rotate the display, then the buttons and the status bar also rotates. And if that is not working, there's a gravity calibration utility here in the menu and you can recalibrate the tablet, so the sensors actually. If you just um, lay it on your desk really flat and then you press recalibrate and then it zeroes the sensor values. So there we go. Let me get out of this application. Let's have a quick look at the applications we can find here on the tablet. First of all, some crap I've installed. Oh uh, no, not Google crap. Sorry guys. You see, um, also the animations, it's it's kind of laggy, so that really sucks. That's why I would go for a quad-core tablet and not a single-core tablet. So those, the times are over for single cores. Um, and to the benchmarks, so I've installed that APK installer that was pre-installed. Then here's some game, it's a racing game, <laughs> it's kind of laggy, we can play it later. The browser, so for browsing the web, this is really okay, so if you just use it to check out some web pages, then this is really no problem at all. I'm just a little bit sorry because my um, internet is kind of slow, I'm currently uploading a new video on Minecraft. And let's see if we can open up some web page. Come on, baby. Okay, yahoo.com. And you see, my, my page is just loading up slowly because my internet absolutely sucks. But um, once the page is loaded up, so scrolling is really not slow. So that's a good thing. And that's mainly the only thing you can do on that tablet. So checking your emails, Facebook, run some simple apps and browse the internet. Oh well. And there we go. Let's go back to the menu. Oh man, this is really kind of slow. This is pissing me off. <laughs> I can't deal with that. If you're used to have a fast tablet and smartphone, then this makes you really mad. Okay, calculator right over here, calendar. Then here we have the camera application. So let's check this out. And it comes with a 0 0.3 megapixel front-facing camera, which is right over here. Oh, come on, open that camera. Okay, let's see if we can do a selfie. Oh, no. That's too... The camera is in the way. I hope you can still hear me, guys. And um, actually, the image quality is not looking too bad. I mean, I look a little bit stoned from last night, and it's really hot in here with all the lights for recording. But um, so far, um, for 0 0.3 megapixels, it looks better than on some other Chinese smartphones. Let's capture a selfie. But I also captured some other selfies, which I can show you. And there we go. So, oh my god, it looks so destroyed. <laughs> but um, it's, It also looks a little bit strange, because my camera body here looks way too long. So I'm not really sure if the dimensions of the picture... Uh, yeah... Uh, four to three or whatever, but looks a little bit strange. Okay, um, let's go back to the menu. That's the front-facing camera. You can use it in Skype. It's detected properly. You can take selfies with that, but don't expect much. Honestly, 0.3 megapixels is not something you want to have.
Clock CPU set downloads. Yeah, the usual stuff. A file explorer also on there. If you want to mod something, install APKs, whatever. Um, benchmark applications, all the Google apps, they are pre-installed. And luckily you don't see that bloatware which was pre-installed because it's disabled. Not, I'm pretty sure the factory puts on those apps um, yeah, in the factory, but then um, the reseller just yeah, disabled all the apps because this would really suck if you have all those crappy games on there, which make the tablet even slower. Okay, um, all the Google apps as you can see, and here we have the Play Store. No problem to download apps from the Play Store, so I downloaded basically Antutu, CPU set, sensor box, um, some games, and here you can see it, so currently really the latest version and you really don't have a problem with that, but keep in mind tablet is kind of slow and won't run all the apps in the Play Store. Yeah, um, sound recorder, Google Talk, yeah, it's just Android, so basically you can install everything you want to, there's really nothing special, so this is basically like an old smartphone with a bigger display and that's it. Only connectivity is Wi-Fi. Um, it would be really nice to have Bluetooth on a tablet, but this cheap tablet doesn't even come with Bluetooth, so this kind of sucks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so actually we, I think we covered all the features and now I want to show you a quick movie test to check out um, if the movies are smooth or not, so if it's lagging um, during the playback and also how the speaker sounds because the speaker didn't look so bad but it made some strange pop noise every time. Yeah, it started to playback something. It was kind of strange but we'll check that out. Okay, um, after this you will see some benchmarks, maybe some gameplay but gaming almost impossible and after this you will hear my final conclusion about the tablet. So let's go guys, let's check this out. So ladies and gentlemen, there we go, here comes a quick speak and movie test here on YouTube. Well, movie playback up to 720p as you can see here in the quality settings. People always ask me, hey my phone has a full HD display but it can only play back 720p in YouTube. Well, that's a problem with the YouTube application, it has nothing to do with the resolution of your display. Since this tablet doesn't even have 720p but it can um, play back 720p. So now you can see that, that this actually has nothing to do with your display. But let's try to play back that. Now the speaker sounds okay, it's kind of loud, but if you have some bass and at maximum volume then it sounds kind of crappy. I mean I haven't expected that it sounds actually quite good like this, so I thought it will sound crappier, but I think um, the back cover there is enough room under the back cover, so actually the sound doesn't sound too bad, and the speaker is also kind of big. So far it's really loud right now. And you also hear a little bit of bass, but not really much, but it's also quite noisy at maximum volume. So yeah, you see um, the speaker is working, don't expect too much from it, I mean 50 bucks tablet, so the speaker will be something like this on the most tablets. If you have some thinner tablets then the speaker will probably sound worse, but here it's a kind of big body so the speaker doesn't sound too bad and the speaker is also kind of big. Okay, then let's continue with some benchmarks. So guys, the benchmarks finished and let's have a look at the results. Um, I don't want to do this with music in this video, I just want to talk a little bit about the results. Um, you can see the single core score is here 268 and multi-core almost the same. Guess why? Because it's a single core CPU so there is obviously no multi-core performance. But there are different versions of the Cube U25 GT. There is a Kotka version, there is an MTK version. There are many different versions so um, just be a bit careful what you order. The Cube U25 GT is not the Cube U25 GT in the most cases. Okay so this core is really 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 low. Then let's have a look on Tutu because Geekbench tells us some numbers but it doesn't tell you how it compares to other devices. So we can just have a look at the result and this is 6675. Wow! really high. So even um, the MTK 6572 uh, six, dual cores they score something over 10k. But we can just have a look at the ranking here. Uh, there we go. And you see um, even the Xiaomi Mi 2 or uh, whatever so it's like five times the performance of this tablet. And 
honestly, um, the performance of this tablet is really kind of low. So I wouldn't go for a single core, never. I would just go for the quad core version of the Cube. Um, if you like the design, I mean, it's uh, it's a public design, so probably a lot of tablets have this one here, but I wouldn't go with the rock chip RK2928. Um, it's just outdated. And you see further to bit um, 4.1.1, it's using the Mali 400MP GPU, which actually isn't a bad thing because this GPU is also some uh, MTK chipsets which are, which are not too bad but the single core CPU is just too slow. Also combined with 512 megabytes of RAM this isn't the real killer machine. Okay that's just regarding on Tutu then I want to show you some other things so CPU set and it's nice to see um, what is actually happening in the background. So now the CPU is running almost 90% of the time at full load. So you see 70 up to 100% and if you do nothing then it just throttles down. But um, if you touch the screen it will actually just go up to 100 because um, really the performance, the clock, it's really so low. Mali 400 MP, as I said, not the worst GPU, but combined with that CPU, not too good. Here we once again see the whole system. So available RAM, it's 17%. It's about 80 megabytes. Internal storage also kind of low. So everything you can see here, some kind of low stats. Um, here you can see the battery connected to my charger, nothing special about this. Um, no thermal data, so there are actually no sensors inside, that um, is really funny. And here we can see that the only sensor which is working is the accelerometer. All the other sensors are in here, but they don't have any output. Funny thing, so they just did, um, did include them in the software, but there are, is no hardware for them and it just um, tells you, hey, there are a lot of sensors, but all those sensors are not working at all. Well, okay, that CPU set, then maybe we can quickly have a look at the sensor box, so you will see that I'm not lying, because, for instance, light and proximity sensor, well, you will see there is absolutely no change, no change detected, so that sensor isn't working for sure. Then let's have a look, for instance, at the gyroscope. Uh, there we go. And nothing at all, so a gyroscope also not working. Only sensor which you have is the Qi sensor, which basically um, yeah, tells the tablet if it's upside down or landscape. Okay, that's regarding the benchmarks and the overall performance, really low, then let's play quickly a game and after this you will just hear my final conclusion about the Cube U25 GT. So guys, here's a quick gaming test and this game has absolutely crappy graphics, hell yes, we can see some titties, that's probably the best about this game, but honestly, the game absolutely sucks and um, maybe it's running on the tablet. It's a 3D game and there we go. Oh my god, even the preview video here is very laggy. Oh come on, that's incredible. That's one, two frames per second. What's going on here? So if you're into games, you should you should not go with that chipset. You should at least go with a quad-core all winner or rock chip or even MTK chipset. You will have a lot of more fun. You can see how laggy that is and this is just the video sequence. But um, let's see how it performs when we're actually in the game and we can actually do something like right now. Oh my goodness, I think we cannot even do a gaming test on the tablet. So, um, the single core rock chip, I wouldn't buy that. I mean, it was the chipset was announced or released. No, 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 not the damn tweet. What the hell? Yeah, um, forget games on the tablet. I mean, you can play card games like um, poker, maybe that will work, but forget all 3D games. You see, um, that was now crashing, and also all other 3D games I've played so far, it wasn't really a lot of fun on this tablet. Okay, that's just regarding gaming, and now let's come to my final conclusion about this thing here. So guys, we're now here at the end of this review, and here comes my honest and final conclusion about the tablet. So TomTom Tom is a new and upcoming shop, they sent me this out to review, I didn't pay it, but I have to be honest, I wouldn't even pay for the tablet, because single core, yeah, nope. 
seriously not. Um, two years ago, maybe as a tablet for kids or whatever, but I, I just cannot deal with that. If I open up an application, it takes 30 seconds, and then I get mad, I just tap the screen two more times, then the application hangs up. Seriously, I would like to smash that thing with a hammer. But um, as a tablet for kids, yeah, I would do it. As an ebook reader for a little girl, I would do it. It's just 50 bucks. I mean, even the tablet charger in my country is more expensive than the whole tablet here. So you always have to think about what you pay, what will you get. Um, there are also some tablets which are kind of good for a low price, so you don't have to add much more. You just have to add more like 30 bucks, so um, you don't have to even double your, your budget in order to get something more decent. There is a different version of the tablet with a quad core inside which is performing quite well, but the single core version in 2015, hell no, I just keep my hands off of that. But thanks to TomTom for sending it out to review, um, maybe you now see what a single core is actually performing in the new Android, so not new Android but new Android version. I mean, when we had um, the Galaxy S1 with what was it, how ice cream sandwich, not even that, the version before gingerbread or something like this. I mean, it was working kind of well because it was just made for um, for a single core. But here with 4.1.1, oh holy crap, not with 50 megabytes of free RAM in the background. I cannot live with that. But thanks to TomTop, maybe check out um, some other things on TomTop because um, they actually have some decent um, stuff, but um, not the QB25 GT. Okay, guys, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a little fun and um, a little bit education about those tablets. Rockchip is a chipset producer, so factory, and they have different Rockchip chipsets. That's just an old Rockchip chipset, and uh, there are really powerful Rockchip SOCs, which you can also find in TV boxes. So Rockchip is not really bad, but the RK2928 is just crap. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's my full review. Battery lifetime okay, and build quality okay, so if you can find it with a different chipset, it's worth it if you can get it for a decent and cheap price. All in all, um, thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, have a nice day. See you again in my next videos, and uh, bye-bye.